Good morning, everyone, and welcome. I know we're excited. It's a big day, and I'm glad you're here for our opening service this morning. If you would all please stand. We do have a soloist, which is wonderful. Julia's here. She is a soloist and a song leader, which means I'm encouraging you all to sing along with all of these wonderful hymns that we have in here today. So if you please stand and turn to page one and join us in the singing of our opening hymn. Son and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Almighty God, by your daily visitation, that your Son, Jesus Christ, at his coming, may find in us a mansion prepared for himself, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. first reading of the second book of Samuel, chapter 7. When the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. 
Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the, Lord, the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved, about and among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I have commanded to shepherd my people Israel, and saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you whenever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place, and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more as formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all of your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Please join me in reading Canticle 15. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for him, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud on their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the Lord. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away again. He has come to the help of the servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans, beginning of chapter 16. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and the body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy, and he will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. <clears throat> Please pray with me. Lord, take me where you want me to go. Let me meet who you want me to meet. Tell me what you want me to say, and please keep me out of your way. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Angels, angels, angels. What comes to mind, right, when you hear the word angel? Is it those fat cheek cherubs with the impossibly tiny wings we see in Renaissance paintings high up on ceilings? Is it the larger-than-life beings with huge white wings that look like something off of a great white swan? These images abound, don't they? I don't know if you remember, but there was a resurgence of angel imagery in the late 1990s. Remember that period? They seemed to be everywhere, all of a sudden. Little ceramic angels sitting on the edge of bookshelves with their legs dangling and their ankles crossed. Remember those? I had one of those. We all did, it seems like. But really, that was nothing new. Angels are as old as time, and they weren't some mythical creature. There are many mentions of angels throughout the Old and the New Testament. The word angel is the name of their office, not of their nature. They are spiritual beings with appropriate missions and activities assigned specifically, specifically to them by God. The Bible describes the functions of angels as messengers, but does not indicate when the creation of these angels occurred. Now, angels attended Jesus when he was tempted in the desert. 
Angels were in the empty tomb and announced that Jesus had risen. Angels walked in the streets of Sodom and were protected by Lot. For all their importance, though, only a few of them are named. Perhaps you remember the angel Raphael or the angel Michael, who have the title of archangel, apparently the angel closest to God and above all the other angels. And today we have the third one that is named. One of, perhaps one of the most famous of all the angels, Gabriel. Gabriel comes to see Mary. And this moment has forever since been celebrated as the, as the Annunciation, for he is, was announcing something truly miraculous to her. The moment that Gabriel tells Mary that she is the most favored of God and will carry the Christ child. Now we hear this twice a year in March, which oddly enough is nine months away back behind us for Christmas. And, that, and, and again here on Christmas Eve. The name Gabriel means God is my strength. And he was indeed a messenger of great news. And this wasn't his first birth announcement, though. He told Zachariah that he and Elizabeth, Mary's cousin, would have a child who would be John the Baptist. Mary's cousin was much older. We know that. Much, much older. And it seemed as if they would never have a child. He is the announcer of momentous news to her as well, telling her first that a prophet will be born and then the Messiah will follow. Pretty important news to be entrusted to this angel. And just what shocking news he did tell. First, like I said, he told the past their prime, Zachariah and Elizabeth, that they would have a baby. Remember, as I said, this couple was quite old and accepted the fact at this point in their lives that they would remain childless. Zechariah is in such disbelief when Gabriel tells him that it, he laughs out loud. And Gabriel strikes him mute until the day John the Baptist is born. That'll teach you not to believe an angel of God, right? <laughs> Then he comes and he shares even more improbable news with Mary. Remember, Mary was very young, probably no more than 15. Poor, from a backwater town. Not married, but betrothed to an older man who is probably a widower who had children from his first marriage. The marriage had been arranged. Joseph was a good man. But her suddenly showing up pregnant would have been a disaster for her. Not only would tradition hold that Joseph would spurn her at that point, but she indeed could be thrown out in the streets to beg or worse. Now it's important to note that while Luke, a learned physician, was not one of the original disciples, he did follow soon after. He knew how babies were created, but he also knew that God was able to do the impossible, including helping an old couple and a virgin each conceive. He's likely to have interviewed Mary in her old age before he wrote this gospel. He portrays Mary as a model disciple, the servant of the Lord who responds in faith to the divine initiative of carrying the Christ child. However, she too asks a lot of questions, wouldn't you? Asking questions is not itself a mark of unbelief. Mary had a questioning faith, and I believe that's an important model for us. Now you may think your ability, experience, or education make you an unlikely candidate for God's services just like Mary or Zechariah or Elizabeth must have. But folks, in your own life, don't limit God's choices. I believe angels are still at work, 
bringing messages to us from God, calling us into his service in some capacity. So today, on this Christmas Eve, I want you to sit in silence for a moment after this sermon. And I'm going to pause before we jump into the Nicene Creed. And I ask you to listen. Listen for that quiet message being sent to you, because I can assure you there one, one is. And I pray that you will respond as Mary did, with faith and willingness. Amen. stand as you are able. In turning to page five, if you will, to join me in the reaffirmation of our faith by reciting the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He is spoken to the prophets. We believe in one and all we have in the apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We'll continue with the praise of the people. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy of the Holy Church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love and be found without fault at the day of your coming. We pray to you, O Lord. The Lord have mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for Larry, our own bishop, for all bishops and other ministers, and for all of the holy people of God, we pray to you, O Lord. The Lord have mercy. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease, and that we all may be one as you and the Father are one. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in positions of public trust, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. That divine wisdom may inspire and direct leaders throughout the world as they take counsel together for the resolution of enduring conflict and destruction, especially in Israel, the Gaza Strip, Palestine, and Ukraine. Lord, Lord, have mercy. For this congregation, for those who are present, and for those who are absent, 
that we may be delivered from harshness and of heart and show forth your glory in all that we do. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have commended themselves to our prayers, for all our families, friends, and neighbors, that being free from anxiety, they may live in joy, peace, and health. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. And for all who have died in the communion of your church, for those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints they may, they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Anne, and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another in all our life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord our God. Let us now pray for our own needs and those of others. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now let us humbly confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in law, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. If we are too sorry, then we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand there. <clears throat> May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please, everyone, come back. Have a seat. Just a couple of quick announcements. Um, first of all, I want to invite you to um, a lovely coffee hour that will be followed after this. A uh, chance to um, visit with you before all the crazy happens this afternoon and this evening. Um, and speaking of that, um, we have two more services today, 5 o'clock and 9 o'clock. 5 o'clock being more of a family-oriented service. And 9 o'clock with our full choir and band back in here. Um, with all the Christmas carols and everything that you can imagine with lessons and carols and it will be truly spectacular so I commend those to you and then tomorrow morning um, we will be right back on Christmas Day with our service at 10 a.m. and as I have said multiple times please don't let me be the only person here um, I, I know I can always drag Trip over here but uh, that's not really fair um, so let's have somebody else come and be with us it's a lovely quiet service um, and I hope that you'll be here. We've got some special music for tomorrow morning as well. Um, Marines Haven is coming up. It's sneaking up on us. It's on January 2nd. We always do the first Tuesday of the month, and it comes in really fast. We only need one volunteer left, and that's to make breakfast for the crowd. We filled up pretty darn fast on this, um, but to make breakfast for the homeless guests that we have here would be truly wonderful. Um, uh, Cynthia's done it many times. She can give you some pointers um, today uh, it, while you're out and about or talking if you've got any questions about that. Um, but it is, it's wonderful for them to wake up and have a warm breakfast before they have to go back out on the street. Um, tough thing to have to say, uh, period. Um, we do have a new Bible study that's coming up. Um, it's a study on Paul and his letters. It's a five-week study course. Um, there's no homework. Uh, you can come to this video service that I'm going to have on Saturdays at 11 o'clock. It'll be about a 15-minute video um, discussing or giving us some information about Paul. And then we're going to discuss what we've learned, and I'm going to do my best to answer your questions about Paul. And if I don't uh, have the answer, I'll, I'll, I'll find out and report back the following week. So um, it'll be an interesting thing starting the first weekend in January. 
Um, I just have to say, the flower arrangement is spectacular, and we have Abby Fleming to thank for that. Um, she worked so hard on this, and she was literally here, folks, for three days, putting all this together. I mean, three full days, and it is really special, and it's gonna make the whole, uh, this will be up for two weeks, so we'll get to enjoy it a lot, but please do say something to Abby when you get a chance. Thank you, Abby, so much for that. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an, as an offering and sacrifice to God. yesterday three times starting in the morning and it was emptied every time I walked by with Archie I came in and I was scrounging around and I went myself to King Cullen to get more um, so that that just goes to show you um, the need that's out there particularly at the holiday so I'm very grateful for those who brought food in today but please do keep this in your minds as you're shopping during the week to bring stuff back next week let us pray Gracious God, I thank you for this food, and I pray that you will find a home for each and every can and box that is here, for people who are hungry and who need this nutrition. I pray that you will bless this food to their use, and as always, keep us mindful of those who do not have enough to eat. All this in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you.
Lord's table and everyone is welcome to receive communion from it. I have gluten-free wafers. If you need one, just let me know when you come forward. And if you would prefer to come forward for a blessing, when you come to the rail, just cross your arms like this and I will be happy to give you one. Our service continues in your bulletin on page nine. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death, and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may, without shame or fear, rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. And he stretched out his arms upon the cross, and he offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. stand as you are able. Let us pray. Eternal God, Eternal God Heavenly Father, Father you have graciously accepted us, us as living members of your Son, Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world of peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
May God give you the grace to never sell yourself short, to risk something big for something good, and the grace to remember that the world is too dangerous for anything but truth and too small for anything but love. And now, my friends, go in peace to follow the good road, and may God's blessings be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. If you would all remain standing, our final hymn is on page 13. If you would join Julia in singing. <clears throat> in the name of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God.